I thought a great place that we could start this conversation was around the importance of a circular economy. You gave a, a speech recently uh, on Pizza Day, and I thought that that specific topic uh, could, could use some more uh, elaboration. And so maybe explain what is a circular economy and why is it so important in the context of Bitcoin? Right. Um, um, well, whatever vision I think that you may have for, for Bitcoin, for cryptocurrency, uh, uh, whatever it is, like all of the benefits of it only really start to materialize in a big way in a world where uh, where money circulates within the internet layer, right? In a lot of ways, uh, uh, today we're in this weird stage where most or much of the activity happens on uh, on a, a regulated exchange that is an extension of the banks, right? So it's uh, you you're like. You're doing the bank stuff to get your your coins, and then you do your crypto stuff, uh, and then you need the bank to get off, uh, which is very weird and inconvenient, and creates this hilarious irony of uh, uh, of uh, the industry saying "fuck the banks" uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, uh, please give us a bank account, right? Uh, and, uh, and and so we're we're always in this uh, weird tension and. It's in some ways, it's like if someone invented email today with all the tech that we have and people would be like writing emails on paper and then like snapping a picture with their iPhone and emailing the picture and then printing it on the other side, like it's still useful for some stuff, but like once it can circulate in the cloud, yeah, that's when we really start to see uh, all of the benefits uh, in, in terms of, you know, the privacy, censorship resistance, flow of money. Uh, flow of value, all of all of these things, and so um, I think, uh, and uh, what we've been doing at Bitrefill for uh, soon eight years now is is to try to further that, right? Uh, to uh, to create uh, a world where people can be comfortable with uh, keeping their money in Bitcoin, uh, with keeping their money in the cloud, knowing that uh, when uh, it becomes time for me to buy something with that money, I will be able to do so. Um, right, uh, because hell, what, what kind of a shitty internet money uh, uh, do we have otherwise if you can't buy stuff with it? So we kind of like uh, uh, the circular economy. Obviously, is uh, uh, it requires a full circle. We're part of that, you know. We're the the chicken side of the chicken and egg. We still need eggs. Uh, we still need ways for people to to get their coins uh, to to earn them or whatever. Um, but at least we provide uh, the the leading. Uh, to my knowledge in the world place for people to actually spend their coins. So when we think of this circular economy, um, part of it is that the legacy finance system is a circular economy, right? If you take like the dollar-based system, uh, I can get paid in dollars, I save in dollars, I invest in dollars, I spend dollars, I pay my taxes in dollars. And it always is, uh, it kind of circulates within this dollar-denominated uh, system and, and it works. Now, as there is a rise of, we can call the new digital financial system, uh, in some way, uh, we have to rely on that legacy system, bank accounts and, and some of these things. So there's connectivity or, or there's some uh, foundation that is still being used. Is the thought process that eventually these two systems will completely splinter from each other and the new digital financial system will need to stand on its own and be its own circular economy without any dependence on the legacy system? Or is there a world where we have a circular economy of you know using Bitcoin, saving in Bitcoin, uh, but still there is uh, maybe some interaction, connectivity, or reliance on the legacy financial system at the same time? Like, How do you see these two systems interacting with each other, maybe in the steady state you know, two decades from now? It's, it's an excellent question, and I think different people have different views on that. Um, I think that interaction is good, um, but if if uh, if we don't have our own uh, the other the more uh, cypherpunky thing to fall back on, uh, then we will always be in a, in a, in a problematic situation uh, w when it comes to the powers that be. We will always be in the please give us a bank account phase <laughs> uh, of uh, uh, of things. So in a lot of ways, it it, it has a lot of benefit, uh, even for the people that don't uh, actively use it on a on a, on a regular basis. The, the the knowledge that there is a crypto economy where I can spend my coins without you know, going back into uh, into the traditional system. Um, so yeah, I think there is, a, a, I mean, obviously a, a lot of uh, uh, um, overlap and bridge points, right? And all of the different uh, uh, exchanges and, and so on are, 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 are that. Um, 
but yeah, I think, uh, you know, a realistic scenario, I mean, look at how I, I look at all of these things that like how internet technologies have evolved in well, at least within my lifetime, uh, which is like, yeah, we have the internet, you know, we still have phones, we can still, you know, we could have had this conversation over a phone call uh, over a traditional phone line, but we choose to do it over the internet because it's better. Um, so uh, there's still a postal service, uh, even though you can send an email at, uh, at zero cost. So it, it's good to be able to, to interface with the old world. And I think we will always need to. And the old world is super entrenched, right? And I mean, if you look at uh, the history of, of Bitcoin and, and the, the world uh, uh, in which Bitcoin arose and how it happened, I see it as one of these things that, um, you know, if you've ever worked with, with uh, programmers, uh, there is a, 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 at some point a situation where a programmer gets fed up with a particular problem and he just codes a massive detour around it just to like, fuck this thing. Right. And, and Bitcoin is like that for, uh, for, for money. Uh, but the, 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 the nerds coded it all the way back from, from gold level and all the way up to the payments level and are trying to build their entirely own, uh, standalone thing. Uh, and, and so from that perspective, yes, it takes a lot of time. And obviously the governments that control the munitions and so on are not going to be the primary uh, allies of that. And probably like the, the realistic best case scenario is for them to let it happen. Uh, you know, the laissez-faire type, uh, uh, type approach that we've seen uh, in many democratic countries when it comes to the internet, for example. Hey, you, did you like this video? Great. Make sure you subscribe, like the video and see you next time.